Hello, my PXers. We are again at CES 2025. You know what we do. We go to shows, we find disruptive technology, and then we evangelize them to you so that you can't visit all the shows, but we do. Every now and then, we stumble, ago, stumble across a little nugget of gold that you may not have found and that we'd love you to find out about. So our little nugget of gold on this video is a company called Femtosense, which is run by a man called Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello. So, the first question always with these videos when we're looking at disruptive technology just like yours, what's the world without you before you came along? Explain that and then we'll, walk, then we'll move on to what you do. For sure. So, you know, we're in an embedded AI company. We build silicon to make AI inference very efficient in embedded devices that you know, live out in the world. We are embedded creatures yeah. uh, in the world. And so this is very relevant to all of us because we want the world to be very smart. We want our devices to kind of know who we are, to be very responsive. And this is where the world before us uh, goes all about constraints. Okay. Constraints. Embedded devices, uh, engineers, uh, and silicon engineers, they all, they know all about this, right? And you're always trying to operate within you know, very limited power, very limited budgets, yep. uh, you have real-time constraints, all these right. things. So let's just go through those, let's just go through those three things. So, so we're talking about embedded edge devices. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to, to things that are looking to do compute on the edge, in on, on the device, connected or unconnected to 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 the cloud, yep. but you want the safety and the security sitting on the device mm -hmm. and you want it to be low power, you want it to be efficient, uh, and you use that word uh, inference. Yes? Yes. Right. So. What are the constraints before you came along? So a lot of it has to do with um, you know, power, right? If you are in a product that doesn't have a you know, plug <laughs> yeah. to the wall. So right? it's, it's got to run on batteries or right. some other power source. Exactly, and it's got to last a certain amount of time, maybe you know, maybe three hours, maybe two years. <laughs> yeah. right? It's a pretty wide range of constraints there. Uh, another big constraint is, of course, the bill of materials and the cost, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, you want to deliver a compelling feature to the user, yeah. uh, you know, it's got to make sense. You usually got to want to pay for it, and you got to make a little money from that. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what are the devices that you targeted when you started the company? So, our initial product uh, areas are you know, hearables is a very big one. They're talking about uh, GLS earbuds, you're talking about hearing aids, you're talking about headsets. Yeah. Uh, home appliances is another one. Uh, we're here with uh, our partners at Love Semiconductor. That's one of their big focuses. So, when you talk about uh, home, smart homes. Mm -hmm. Uh, home appliances, which are the ones that you actually are targeting? Yeah, so you target, you know, the white goods. You're, you're talking about the, the refrigerators, you know, the microwaves, washing machines. You're also talking about the HVAC, um, you know, heaters, air conditioners, uh, split units. Uh, all these things send you a little smarter right, in, right. That, in that category. Right, right. Okay, so we've understood the constraints of, uh, we've understood where you're targeting, and we understood what the context mm -hmm. of, of, of what design engineering is trying to get through. All due respect to you, they may not have seen you or come across you before, because you're a young company with, yeah, uh, we're a startup. with a young dynamic yeah. team. What then, how do you change their world with your technology and exactly what is your technology? Right, so if here are the constraints and you know, their ambitions are beyond what is, you know, what is possible, we're here to make those uh, visions and uh, applications possible, right? So maybe before you could do a very simple like wake up word, uh, so your system turns on, uh, maybe now you can you know, talk to your system that really understands you and maybe knows who you are uh, and can respond back and can take action on that. So sort of the next level of intelligence um, from just turn on, turn off to, oh, okay, I know what to do and I can you know, provide that service to my, to my customers. Yeah. Right. So that's what we mean by uh, providing more efficient technology so that you push the frontier of what is possible to the designers yeah. and customers. Yeah. And what they so, so I understand what you do. Sorry, I understand. Why? <laughs> yeah, no, I understand why you do it. Yeah. What I want them to know is, yeah. what exactly do they buy from you? So we sell uh, silicon. We're a fabulous uh, semiconductor company, but we also do a lot of software. We do a lot of applications as well. Uh, we're here showcasing our first chip, uh, the SPU001, sparse right. processing unit. Well, just repeat that so they know what the name of the chip is. We'll put it up on the screen. We'll okay. just repeat it. Sparse processing unit 001. That's yep. our first product. Yep. Uh, we're also showcasing our partner's product uh, above semiconductor. Uh, it's called the Atom 100, yeah. uh, which incorporates our chip uh, and their chip into one package. Right? So it looks like a chip, but it's really multiple chips itself. So it's almost like a chipset. It's a ready to go. Little chipset within chip. Right? Yeah. It's the way of the world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. System on chip. Or, or, System in package, yes. multi chip package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Apply. So you're in charge of the company. When somebody says, What does that chip do? You call it a spark, just repeat, spar. Sparse processing unit. 
smart thought processing unit. So it's a kind of neural processing unit. It's a neural processing unit. So that's how you that's how you describe it. Yeah. Right. Okay. What's it actually doing? It does a lot of math. <laughs> right. right. AI algorithms. They're all about you know very heavy math. You know, you got these matrix operators. You got some complex nonlinearities. Uh, this is what often blows the budget for product designers, right? Just yes, that's because they've got to go higher up the food chain to get what you've got. Yeah, exactly. And then somebody has to pay for that, right? Yeah. Somebody has to create all that system integration here. What if you could take all that AI capability and just put it on the device right in front of you? Yeah. You don't necessarily have to have the cloud connection. Yeah. You can't. Um, but it relieves that burden. Yeah. Uh, and so, so if you had to summarize it, you have a neural processing unit. Yes. That's what you've got. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the name sort of implies what's different about it is that it's really focused on sparse math. Right? Our thesis is that a lot of the AI workloads right. are a little well, I've only that. been doing this for 30 years. I've never heard that phrase before. So what is that? So that's all about removing the you know, unnecessary operations uh, and unnecessary components of your neural network algorithm uh, and then right. taking so advantage of that. So you're rationalizing everything, you're compact, compact. Yeah, in, it's another kind in, of compression uh, yes. that we take advantage of. And so that you do that in software, I'll take it. Uh, it's a so software hardware uh, kind of co-design. Right. So, you know, you will teach your neural networks to be efficient. Uh, you will quantize the math. You will use maybe 4-bit, 8-bit, 16-bit integer math. You may use some little floating point, low bit floating point math. Um, we offer another uh, tool of sparsification to make it even more sparsification. sparsification. <laughs> Doesn't matter that I've not heard the word specification. Well, now explain uh, your relationship with Evolve Semiconductor, because obviously you're in mm -hmm. partnership with them, so explain how that works and how you work together yeah. to give this system or module chipset mm -hmm. relationship so that a uh, design engineer looking to do the kind of things that you described in the applications that you described, how do you put them together and why is that a benefit to them? Yeah, so our partners at Above Semiconductor, you know, they are uh, very active players in the whole appliance market, the digital appliances, you know, all the sorts of controllers they have for displays, motors, uh, they're very active, right? Yes. And of course, these and are they the ones. Come to solve, don't they? So yes, mm -hmm. that's a rich heritage of <laughs> white good industry. Yeah, exactly. A lot yeah. of the uh, leading products come from you know Seoul and yeah, you know, some of the leading companies there. To the but it's a whole ecosystem. Well. It's Absolutely. a whole ecosystem, right? Yeah. It's not just yeah. the you know the brand names. Who are the suppliers? Right? Yeah. So there is heritage to this. Is the point? There is heritage. Exactly. Exactly. And of course, with this push for uh, incorporating AI into uh, these products. Right. Now it's time to create these partnerships to introduce these features in a very timely manner uh, and also with that differentiates from you know, all the other approaches yeah. that you could do. Yeah. So last question, what is your, in, 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 in the case of your partnership with them, in the case of your neuro, neural processing chip, mm -hmm. what's your definition of AI? What's your, what's your chip actually doing that is AI? It, yeah, we understand that, you're, that, you're, you're, that you can wake up the machine. We understand mm -hmm. that it will give you um, It'll give you the ability to interact with the machine. But what's your definition of AI at this point? <laughs> AI is very broad. Yeah, I know, I know. We should yeah, ask the question. Yeah. That's, that's why I've asked the question. You know, it's basically um, you know when when a system can sort of you know, take an information from the environment and then you know, transform that information into some you know useful action. Yes, that is you know, ultimately maybe what we're all trying to do. <laughs> yes, we have some goals in mind, and you know, I'm, I'm seeing you. We're talking. Right. We're all trying to process that uh, and achieve those goals, right? So we are trying to enable machines to do that, right? So yeah. a machine can, uh, you know, take in some user's voice, right, and you know, translate that into some useful action so that it can better serve the user, right? Uh, that's just one example, right? You could also say, well, you know, maybe there are people in this space, and maybe I should only, you know, turn on when a certain person is around. <laughs> yes, uh, that's the question I'm asking. Yeah. The, the, the question I'm asking is, mm -hmm. is that what your chip is uh, is facilitating? Yes, I'm exactly. asking that question so that people absolutely understand because these are common, these are phrases that people throw out. I was at CES a year ago and everybody was talking about AI and everybody was talking about that they could do AI. And I have to be honest with you, I came away from that whole show going, mm -hmm. no, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They put AI on the side of their chip because if they don't, their investors will be very cross with them. Exactly. So, so I just keep the mantra. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I don't, I, I, I don't want to do interviews with another set of semiconductor companies who say, I've got AI. I need to understand what your definition of AI, so they understand what your definition of AI is. Yeah, so it's, it's really all about um, being able to support that heavy needed compute that is required by AI. So you can deliver those features. If you want to have a system that you can talk to like a person, yeah. but it's not a person, it's a machine, yeah. right? that requires AI. If you yeah. want uh, your system to be able to go out and act and respond to the world, it's all about robotics. Yeah. You also have something, you need some pretty heavy needed compute. 
Yeah. Um, and so all of that is part of the mix of you know, enabling this AI. Right? Okay. So, right. Last question. Thanks, Ben. Twenty minutes lis listening to you. Mm -hmm. Great story. Young dynamic CEO. Uh, partnered with a fantastic company based in uh, in in Seoul. Everything makes great sense. How do they evaluate you if they want to come to you and talk to you? Yeah. So. We're very happy to provide evaluation kits. You know, they really get their hands on the hardware. Yeah, uh, comes with software, right? If they want to uh, try out the software, try to run their own AI workloads, right? That's a lot of the customers. You know, they want to build AI, right? Yeah. So you know, so we you are do have an evaluation board where you just plug it in yes. and go. Exactly. You plug it in. You go. You get some software. Uh, you get a bunch of examples. Yeah. Right? Ready to go applications too. All yeah. these things are uh, you know, included in the. Components that we provide for the evaluation. Excellent. And, what, and do they get that directly from your website? Yes, they can talk to us. Uh, they can, uh, you know, reach out to partners, uh, and then yes, we can set them up with uh, what they need for the evaluation. Excellent. Sam, thank you very much for that introduction to Fentosense. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Look forward to hearing more from you. Been fun. Good.